Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Door to Door. I'm Virginia Stanley. Chris Connolly here. Great to see you all. And Lainey Mays. Library Love Fest team is thrilled to have a very special guest with us today from HarperCollins. This is Jean Marie Kelly, affiliate publisher of Harper 360. Hello, Jean Marie. Hi, Virginia. Thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me have you. Oh, very good. I don't even know what that means. I don't. Um, so we've worked together quite a long time. Jean Marie is, um, as I say, the affiliate publisher of Harper 360, and she's going to be talking about forthcoming titles from this imprint within HarperCollins, Harper 360. She's going to talk about some fall titles and some winter titles, including books by Jeffrey Archer, Dinah Jeffries, and Donna Hay. Um, Jean Marie, you've been with Harper since 2003. Shocking. <laughs> What'd you say? I said that's shocking. <laughs> I know, right? Um, but you started out um, as a marketing director and then yeah, you had yeah. various roles at Harper. And then you, yeah. you um, in 2012, you launched Harper 360. Yeah. So before we get into the titles, can you just talk for a few minutes about the imprint yeah. Harper 360 and how it differs from all the other imprints at uh, HarperCollins. What's, what makes this uh, so unique? Yeah, hey. Harper 360 is a really interesting uh, thing in that we exclusively work with our um, affiliate sister companies around the world. So um, I, I exclusively publish books into the US from uh, HarperCollins UK, HarperCollins India, HarperCollins Australia and New Zealand and Canada. So all of the English speak uh, English speaking um, countries that we work with, and um, so it's kind of it's interesting. So I never kind of acquire an author here in America. I do have a few U.S. based authors, but they were originally published either by the U.K. or by Australia. So it's kind of interesting. Um, it's it's a great way for us to be able to take our authors that are from other countries and give them a platform and um, make their books available here in the US. So it's really fun where I am I live on many different time zones. So I'm talking with the UK in the mornings and then at night it's Australia and India is very hard to talk to. That's usually super early in the morning, but anyway. So it's a lot of fun, great people and yeah, and a lot of great books. That is a very good explanation of this yeah, it's very different. You know, it's a very different kind of an imprint. So um, there have been some wild titles. Remember the book from Australia about the outhouses? My God, <laughs> I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, funny. but we'll move on. Exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, okay, so why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the titles? Yeah, that uh, have struck your fancy and are sure to strike the fancies of librarians all over the place. Sure. So my the first book I wanted to talk about was Jeffrey Archer's Over My Dead Body. Um, Jeffrey Archer is, you know, no doubt one of the greatest storytellers in the world. Um, and you don't take my word for it. It was um, the New York Times that called him that. So I'm not lying. Um, we're excited to have him back with HarperCollins. He, he published with us many, many years ago. And this is his first book with us in a long time. We've taken over with this William Warwick um, series that he's been working on. William Warwick was a character who was in his Clifton Chronicle books. And so, and that was beloved by all of his fans. And he got a lot of mail saying, hey, we want to know more about William Warwick. So William Warwick is a detective in London. And we're basically, each book kind of goes through different parts of his career. And in this book, um, he is working in the cold case unit and uh, he's been tasked with solving uh, five different murders um, that have, are just outstanding. So um, it's a really good introduction to the character of William Warwick. So you don't have to have read the other three books before you start this one. He definitely takes great pains to kind of make sure you can start at this point. Um, he's very much, if you're a fan of like John Grisham, Bernard Cornwell, Ken Follett, people like that, you will really love Jeffrey Archer. Um, I know he's got a lot of fans here already, but we're absolutely looking to find new people and hopefully the librarians can help us uh, do that. We'd really appreciate that. The book list, book list just gave us a great review uh, of this book. It called it another winner in this consistently excellent series. Um, and Donna Seaman did an amazing interview with him. And I think you guys have a clip of that somewhere, but um, that you can share with everybody. 
But I think one of the highlights I've seen of the Jeffrey Archer publication was Virginia Stanley not interviewing Jeffrey Archer and Anthony Horowitz on the last, on the door to door. Um, that was kind of crazy. That was kind of crazy. Yes, I, I was up half the night trying to figure out what I was going to say and doing all this research and drilling down and looking at old videos to see like, you know, what, you know, what the pacing was, what kind of questions I should ask and shouldn't ask. And I never asked a single question. And I believe <laughs> we have a little clip of that. Chris, do you want to show it? Yes, I'll pull it up right now. You know, Jeffrey, for much less. I'm just the warm up act. So you have. Are the warm up? <laughs> it's it was tried. I know it's hard to resist. He was tried to avoid hurling insults in my direction. Uh, I am very proud and very Why? happy to be your. Why should I stop you hurling know. insults in your direction? You're among the most talented writers in the world. Oh. And you know, basically, I'm livid with you because you don't settle down to do one thing. You don't give us one. If you'd given us book after book, look at someone like Lee Child, who isn't in your class, but he doesn't do five different books in five years. Explain yourself, young man. Well, I will say this to those listening. That, uh, I'm very happy to say that Jeffrey Archer and myself have known each other for quite a long time now, for probably five or ten years, in fact. I, I would even like to suggest that we might despite the evidence, be friends. Um, and Jeffrey has always given me um, very, very good advice about my career. He introduced me to my agent and has given me, and, and incidentally, I should also say, Jeffrey, your books have always been an inspiration to me. Your, your narrative brilliance, which is really unparalleled, has been something which I try in my own small way to emulate. But the point is that I have said this to you, I have a lot of ideas. That's a trouble. And I don't just want to do, like Lee Child, do 27 Alex Riders or, 37 James Bonds or whatever it's going to be. I rather like the idea that writing is an adventure and that every day brings something new. So even though I may have sacrificed my place on the bestseller lists, I'm not unhappy with the sort of progress I have made, despite your, your admittedly excellent advice. Well, I'm going to tell you people now who are listening, you librarians, and don't want to sort yourself out between six different Anthony Horowitz books. Look up his book on the great detective Sherlock Holmes. It's thrilling from beginning to end. It's as good as anything Sherlock Holmes wrote. You will love it. Don't look for that tonight and you'll see what my grumble is about him continually changing his movement. <laughs> yeah, get the idea. And it went on and on like that. I mean, there wasn't a moment you said a word. Um, and I think the librarians really loved it if all the comments were to be were to be believed. So he is oh, a character writing. Are... He's he's wonderful. G Marie, we have a comment in the chat that says uh, they had never where did that go? I think it's from our friend Jennifer Winberry said she had over her dead uh, over my dead body was her first Jeffrey Archer and she's in love and I'm okay. glad you said that that they can this is a good foray into it yeah yeah he very specifically did that on purpose because he was coming to a new publisher so he knew that we'd want to kind of like start with a big fanfare and he wanted to make sure that all the new readers we found could just jump right in and he actually has a mis he has a mystery that he solves in like the first you know 60 pages that really just it's it's a setup piece that sort of demonstrates exactly who the character of William Warwick is and he it's just a brilliant job he does with it and you can watch the whole thing on Facebook live or go to our YouTube channel and you can watch the whole thing there it's it's absolutely hilarious one of the comments was I feel like I'm at a writer's conference in the bar <laughs> So yeah, yeah, between that and the and the Donna Seaman interview, that's that's and that's a great that's a great comment from Jennifer Winberry. That says a lot about the book and how you don't need to, you know, just start, just dive in. Cool. So um, yeah, and I guess have? oh, okay. So here we'll go into the white ship. This is Charles Spencer. Um, one of my favorite things with history is when you're reading it and you think this is like a novel, you know, this is like just a pure drama. And that's very much what the white ship is. 
Um, it's an honest to goodness Game of Thrones story, perfect for fans of Dan Jones, um, Michael Palin. Um, the sinking of the white ship, it was the year was 1120. Um, it was Henry the first son and heir to the throne was on this ship and everyone on the ship got drunk and basically the ship crashed into the rocks and the heir to the, to the throne was, was dead. Um, this threw Britain into such uh, conflict um, over the crown and who would inherit the crown and wars were fought. And basically this white ship drowning changed the, the entire, entire course of history um, for, the, for, the, for England. Think about it this way. If that ship hadn't drowned, you would have a completely different royal family on the throne today. You would never have heard of Elizabeth. You'd never have heard of Charles or William and Harry. You wouldn't know who they are. They might still exist, who knows, but you, you wouldn't know who they were. So it's kind of really that monumental what happened, just changed everything. Um, the other kind of cool thing about this book is Charles Spencer led a dive team um, to go looking for the wreckage of the white ship. Um, they, they did this this past summer. They went and went on a dive and they found what they believed to be the white ship um, wreckage. They were able to identify some you know, pieces of what of the wood and what it looked like. Then they couldn't bring anything up though because they need to get permission. So they, they came up, um, they, they've now gotten permission from the French government to go back and retrieve some items. And that dive is gonna happen probably in October, right around when we're publishing this book. Um, Good Morning America covered the first dive, really great piece. Um, and then it looks like they'll be covering the second dive as well when they're bringing up some of these pieces. So there's a lot of big publicity that's going to happen on this one. And it is truly a spectacular reading, dramatic, novel-like story that uh, you won't be able to put down. Definitely like the real Game of Thrones. My author photo, no? Oh, I think we showed it already. I was running from one room to the other. Oh, sorry. There you go. <laughs> now, that, did we discuss who Charles Spencer is? Oh. He, so uh, he is Diana, Princess Diana's brother. That's no? correct. That's correct. The Lord of Althorpe. So, and he's, but he has been writing history for um, a long time. Um, he, he did, we did another book with him on Charles the first and, um, yeah, he's got a couple of different books, um, out there already. So a uh, good historian. Yes. Princess Diana's brother. Yeah. Do you think all those books behind him in that author photo are books or wallpaper? No, I'm sure it's books. Um, the, the stately manor upon which he lives, Althorpe is, you know, it's one of those houses like you see in Downton Abbey, you know, those kinds of, uh, uh, manorial estates yeah. so i'm sure yeah. they're all real <laughs> yeah probably so anyway that's coming out october 19th so yeah very exciting okay so we'll talk about dinah jeffries now and dinah oh. jeffries i think um some of the librarians will have heard of already she is the author of the tea planter's daughter which was a really uh, a big book a few years back um this um, is a different sort of era. She writes great historical fiction, but this time she's doing World War II. Um, this is uh, about three sisters, and this is actually going to be a trilogy um, looking at kind of the war from the three different sisters' point of view. They, they are growing up in this rural um, a town, but every town in France is affected by the war. Um, so one of the sisters gets involved with the resistance. One of the sisters is, you know, working to keep the family together. And then one of the sisters is very pastoral. She's always gardening. She's kind of the homemaker, but each of them are kind of delving in. They're, they're getting involved with the resistance and with the war in different ways. And honestly, Dinah Jeffries is just spectacular at this kind of historical fiction. Um, we were we were saying she's like uh, Santa Montefiore, 
uh, Lucinda Riley. Um, Hazel Gaynor is another um, comp to her. She actually provided us with a really great uh, quote, Hazel Gaynor. She said, what a treat. Dinah Jeffries weaves a rich tapestry of courage, passion, and family secrets beneath the dark shadows of war. Um, Dinah always gets great reviews. Um, the Tea Planter's Wife got terrific reviews. And this is just another great um, entry for her. And I'm looking forward to um, this one. And then we'll have two more books after. That is exciting. That's a beautiful jacket too. It's a great it. jacket. Yeah. 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 And there's a library hardcover edition. Oh, thank you. I forgot to thank mention you. that, Lainey. Very good. Yeah, we did a library hardcover for this. So hopefully that will please our librarian friends. <laughs> Friend Jennifer Winberry says she loves the idea of a sister's trilogy. And I agree. I think that's a unique perspective. That's really exciting. Yeah. It's really, it's really nice just because it's this very unique perspective of three, you know, young women who are all in this very middle of nowhere town, but they're still sort of affected by the war. Oh, okay, Donna Hay, one pan perfect. Um, so Donna Hay is Australia's number one cookbook author, um, and she, this is her next spectacular book, um, uh, more than 120 recipes. You only need one pot, one pan, one tray, one bowl. Simple, easy, no fuss, deliciousness. Um, I always like to say Donna is kind of, she reminds me so much of Ina Garden, the Barefoot Contessa. She reminds me of Nigella Lawson. I think of those two, and I think of Donna in the same way, like bringing elegance to a simple, uh, simple, easy to do recipes, but like giving them this, this next level elegance, but it's not gonna take you a ton of time and a ton of ingredients. Um, the other thing about Donna is she is a perfectionist when it comes to putting these books together. You can see by this gorgeous photography, like every, every moment of putting these books together is thought out, like how the, how the meatballs are placed there and, and um, how the cucumbers are cut and, and the way that piece of cake is sort of cut out just so. Um, the photography in her books are spectacular. The books themselves are just gorgeous paper. They're like works of art themselves. I know that's not great for libraries who want it to come back. <laughs> so hopefully people aren't stealing them. But these are really uh, fabulous recipes. What's also unique about this book too is um, she's going to have QR codes on a number of the recipes. Um, so you'll see a QR code and you can just use your camera on your phone and it will pop open a video of Donna making that recipe. So that's pretty spectacular. Um, and I wanna say there's something like 25 of those videos that'll be available as well. So um, yeah, I mean, she's just, she's just the best, Donna. Do you wanna make everything, Virginia? Oh, you're muted. Oh. When we were going through this cookbook, it was just like, oh my God, everything in this looks so beautiful. And um, can you talk about the, um, the measurement? Because that's a really cool thing. Yes. So good. thank you for bringing that up. There is actually a section at the beginning of this book, which is, it's right at the top. And it very much gives you every sort of measurement conversion you can need. So if she's talking grams or something, she's, you know, then it says, this is how much that equals in tablespoons or cups or whatever. So it's super easy. And she even does things like, you know, if she's referring to an aubergine, she'll let you know it's an eggplant, um, things like that, like those different different kinds of differences. She's been publishing internationally for a while now. So she knows how to make sure that every, um, every recipe is accessible to all of her fans all around the world. The, the other thing that's interesting too is in baking actually, working in grams is actually better because it's much more precise. And we know baking is actually a very, uh, it's more science than art really um, about baking. So uh, I found that quite interesting. And my, my skill actually has, it has grams or ounces you can do, so. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, didn't she have a, a a cocktail recipe in one of these books? Oh, yes. Um, we actually are all having the um, the grapefruit cocktail. Oh, I can't remember what the name of this is. Does anyone have that? <laughs> the grapefruit yeah. vodka punch. I'll share right. the image of the website and I'll share the link everyone who's watching. Yeah. So this is like grapefruit vodka, coconut water. It's just so refreshing. It's beautiful. 
like this is just Donna. Like as I say, look at this photograph and that little wrapped up vanilla beans and and all that. It's just beautiful. So so yeah, we'll we'll put that um, we'll put that recipe link for you. And she's actually, if you go to Donna's website, she's got a lot of good re cool uh, drink recipes. <laughs> a lot of good recipes. I liked because you could say like I want to make dinner or a drink, right. and then it would come down. That was really cool. Yeah. No, it's a really well thought through. Oh yes. Cheers to everyone. Nice summer Cheers. cocktail for us. Yes. Yours looks very brown, Chris. <laughs> I mean, I took some artistic liberties, but yes, it's very close. <laughs> I actually didn't find pink grapefruit. I have ruby red grapefruit juice, so. <laughs> I'm at my mother's and she's got Gatorade. Listen, oh, it's, it's the you. idea. <laughs> but it looks delicious. It yeah. looks really delicious. Now, Everybody Donna, loves the Donna's, QR, QR code in the chat. Yeah, the QR code's cool. No, I like that too. I remember early, I don't know, you, Virginia will remember early days when we were starting to figure out how to, you know, do CD-ROMs. Remember we had CD-ROMs I do. Yeah, the American Sign stuff. Language book. Yep. And this is just like so obvious. Just put a little QR code, you just pop it up, and then you can see her making the recipe right in front of you in the kitchen. It's fabulous. And well, you know. I think there's something about, well, for me anyway, I think, because <clears throat> I'm a idiot in the kitchen. I certainly know how to eat, but I don't know how to make it. <laughs> um, but um, I, I love the idea of a video of why, I mean, I know, you know, lots of, lots of authors do that, but to be able to just access that from the book and yeah, to watch yeah. her do it, it sort of demystifies things. And these, exactly. the recipes are not like, you know, a husk of a rhinoceros. Like it's not, nothing crazy. No, it is kind of something it, insane, but you know what I mean? That, no, that's what I love about her. Like, you know, it's the same as I said about like I love the Barefoot Contessa for that reason. Yeah, too. It's just like yeah. really simple stuff, but like raising the elegance bar so you at home just feel like you know you're the queen bee. You know, you are the right. Barefoot Contessa. You are Donna Hay. Yeah. yeah, and at Lainey, at Lainey was talking before. She just mentioned it now too, but before we were talking. And just navigating that site, and if we, maybe we could even put the link in, you guys, of the um, of Donna Hay's site because it is really cool. Like you know, just yeah, like that. Like Lainey said, you could like I want to cook. I don't know. I want to make appetizers, and then you click yeah, on that, and yeah. then there's a whole thing. Very cool. Very accessible. Yeah. It's donnahay.com.au for Australia. <laughs> Interesting. I oh, know what, Chris. Oh no, I just said I did put the link in. The comments and oh, yeah i do love the qr code thing too as well i think most probably librarians are always a step ahead anyways you know but you know they, they are ubiquitous at this point you don't need extra software you just take a picture with your iphone exactly bam bam boom you're there so really cool amy white says qr helps librarians too so that cds don't get lost or damaged i was just there thinking that yeah <laughs> very cool and um um you know, cookbooks are hugely popular in libraries, as I'm sure everybody in the comments will tell you. Um, we'll take a station break for one second just to tell you that the Library Love Fest team will be cooking. When? The date. I want to know when. Week <laughs> after next. I don't know the date. <laughs> Pulling that up now. 31st, right? 31st. Yes, All we're right. ending August in style. So. Yes. What are you making? We don't know yet, but okay. it's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to we're going to take some samples from uh, recipes. Samples. We're going to take recipes from uh, different cookbooks, and we're each going to make something. We've done this in the past, and it's super fun. So that will be our last Facebook Live for the month of August, and what a way to end! So uh, come back in two weeks, and we also have great uh, authors coming up next Tuesday, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So. Continue. Now, I, now I'm on tender hooks. Who's coming next Tuesday? Wait, okay. uh, it has to do with dogs and oh. animals, oh. but keep you baited. Well, you, could tell, you could tell them now. Tell them now. That's fine. Oh, okay. Well, I don't have it in front of me. But the, uh, Blizzard of Polar Bears by Alice Henderson, and then Dogs on the Trail by Blair Braverman. Oh. Very excited. So you yeah. get pictures of dogs and then you know, story with animals. So we're excited. Uh, Women in the yeah. wilderness, fiction, nonfiction. It's going to be so cool. Yeah. Um, that sounds That's exciting. Sweet. Yeah. I love it. Great. I love it. Jean Marie, I know yes. we don't have this book to talk about, but since we're talking about animals, 
360 has all of the little book philosophies of the otters, which I have, love. And what you have alpaca and sloth, sloth. And, and the otter books. Yeah, a little book of sloth, sloth philosophy got us started about three years ago. And you, I, I can't tell you how many I've sold of that book, like, you know, 100,000 copies. It's been amazing. Just like living your life like the way a sloth would. You look at a sloth sort of hanging there, just. And, you know, they they have a philosophy of life and we can learn a little something from them. So our author, Jenny McCartney, uh, Jenny McCarthy, she has um, uh, just found this way to sort of pull little snippets about these animals and really make you relook at your life a little differently. So maybe we could put the link into those as well, just in case you guys mm -hmm. haven't seen them, because they are really they're adorable. They're precious in the nicest sense of the word precious. Not like, isn't that precious? It's precious. And aside, there was an animal uh, animal adventure. The people who did the giraffe, remember who had the, the giraffe pregnancy? April. A uh, pregnancy, yeah. April, April, you were so addicted to that I giraffe. Was, you were addicted to. All right, I was. We kept um, emailing each other every had, day. They, they just had a baby sloth born in captivity for the first time. And if you go to go to their website, there's a just tiny little baby. Sloth. It's adorable. Yeah. So. Oh God. Jean Marie, send us the link. We'll put it in the chat. All right. I will. I will. It was fabulous. Anyway, sorry, I digress. But <laughs> we're all about digression. <laughs> you can't digression. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll tell you about another one of my books, another cookbook. How about that? <laughs> This is probably for Chris, because Chris is, you're a vegetarian. Are you vegan or vegetarian? I was once one or the other, depending. I'm a huge Bosch fan, though, so either way. Okay. I love this. Okay. Tell me why you love Bosch. <sighs> because everything I make is delicious, and it doesn't feel like I'm eating healthy, despite the fact that I generally am when I right. do the recipes. Yes. No, very good. Perfect. So these are the Bosch boys. This is not the cover. We are, we are actually super close to the cover. I just saw something yesterday. We should have that online very soon. Um, but these guys are amazing. This is their fifth book and they are vegan, but you know, they're, they really focus in on, as Chris was saying, just making these recipes delicious for anyone. You, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even have to know that it was vegan or, you know, non-dairy and all that stuff. So basically this is the fifth book and what they're doing in this book in particular is doing on a budget so it's very much about stuff that you can make that's beautiful as you can sort of see from these um uh, spreads but you know on on a budget um there's 80 uh simple delicious all plant recipes um and yeah these guys have huge social media channels like people just love them um if you know thugs kit thug kitchen or you know the avant garden vegan gaz oakley that's kind of the same space that these guys are in um and they are just fantastic and we're very excited to have a, another book from them this is gonna be uh, until January 4th. So it's another good way to kind of like start your year off right. You know, if we all just take one day a week and not have any meat, that can change the planet. So just saying, and you should use this cookbook to do it. <laughs> Yo. Virginia, Virginia with the, with the meat. I said, I, I said, I love that. And I think that that's a, that's a wonderful thought and completely doable yeah it is doable isn't it yeah Ooh, and even yeah. desserts look at that brown hello Ooh, i'm hungry that. now hello. Hello. All, right. all right all right well then let's go from uh delicious food to delicious storytelling who loves a rom-com yum i know yeah so uh, lindsey kelk on a night like this um this is a Cinderella story, kind of literally. She start goes to the, the, our heroine, uh, whose life is a little bit on the on the outs. She takes a job for a very uh, well known influencer and ends up having to work on uh, this giant ball um, and with this woman. And then she ends up meeting this man. And anything can happen on a night like this. Um, 
Lindsay Kelk, uh, we've been working with her for like since we started uh, 360, you know, nine years ago. She is just a great storyteller, funny, hysterical rom coms. She did a series called the I Heart series. So there was like I Heart New York, I Heart Paris, yada, yada, yada. Um, and she's been doing standalone books lately. So this is, I wanna say our third in a row standalone with her. The last book was called In Case You, in, in Case you Missed It. Um, and we got and we got reviews in uh, Us Weekly, Marie Claire, People Magazine, uh, Pop Sugar. Lindsay's like really kind of on the rise now. So I'm really excited about this one. Um, I think we can kind of take her to the next level. She's a huge bestseller in the UK. Um, she happens to actually live in LA now. Um, she's been living in LA for about ooh, maybe four or five years. And before that, she lived in New York. So she's very American, even though she's British. Um, yeah, and so uh, this is for fans of Sophie Kinsella, Josie Silver, Vari McFarland. Oh, and we got a quote in from, oh, the beach, uh, the beach reads lady. God, I can't remember her name. That's terrible. Anyone remember her name? Emily. Um, yes, yes, that's right. My goodness. <laughs> any, any librarians remember the day? Emily Henry. That's Henry. it. <laughs> So we just got a quote from her and we'll have that on the front cover too. And we'll get that in the catalog too. So you'll be able to see it when you go, go looking for it. So that's a so great yeah, Mari like, McFarlane quote too. And a great Mari McFarlane quote. Yeah. Those two are actually friends. They're uh, they've uh, done a lot of events together. So yeah, we're actually going to try and do some events with Lindsay this time too. This is going to be on sale January 18th. So a little ways on this one. And I should mention, um, we're missing a few of these books on Edelweiss right now, but they're, we're working on getting those up to you, up for you. So you, they should be up there relatively soon. I should note that Jane Jorgensen very astutely noted that the character on the cover looks like she's drinking Donna Hayes grapefruit mm -hmm. vodka punch. She does, look at that. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> nice catch there, Jane. You're totally exactly. right. Exactly. Very good. All right. Um, okay, yes. Yeah. So another novel um, is Midnight in Everwood. Um, this is the Nutcracker for adults. Um, and going in that sort of vein of a little bit got adding a little gothic twist. This is sort of Aaron Morgenstern's The Night Circus. Also, you know, think of uh, Caraval, Stephanie Garber, um, V.E. Schwab, that, that kind of writing, that very rich, deep um, storytelling. And again, this is just a beautiful, magical reimagining of the Nutcracker in this very gorgeous wintry package. Um, uh, M.A. Uh, Kuzniar is a, a big Instagram um, person. She uh, bookstagrams at Cozy Reads. So check her out there. But this is a, uh, a wonderful novel. And uh, yeah, so about, you know, a, a young woman whose family is not going, she wants to be a ballerina, but her family won't let her. They want her to get married. It's like 1906 in, in, in England, turn of the century. And um, ends up a man, uh, a toy maker moves across the street and magic comes to their street and all sorts of magical things happen where she ends up being a ballerina in a beautiful stage, but there's a price to pay for the magic it comes with a little bit of a dark side to it. So that is that one. Love that. It's very interesting. Okay. okay. And then now we're gonna go back to um, rom-com. This book, I love. I listened to this on audiobook. Um, I went. I went down to the beach over uh, over Memorial Day, and this was my you know two hour drive back and forth book. I was just laughing, sitting in the car by myself, just laughing. It was pretty pretty funny. Um, Andy Osho is a comedian and actress. I don't know if anyone watched the last season of Line of Duty, but um, that's that British show. So she was the um, the reporter that the whole you know uh, mur the murder who was murdered and the whole season revolves around trying to solve her murder. So she pops up constantly throughout this, and you know it's a serious role. But they always say that comedians are better in kind of serious roles because you need that sort of angle to sort of pull it off. Anyway, so this is a rom com from Andy Osho. Um, Beth O'Leary, author of The Flat Chair, she calls it witty, pacey, and joyful. Um, it's a truly uplifting celebration of friendship. 
basically you have three friends who all are having a terrible romantic time and they come up with this brilliant idea that they're each going to match make for each other. Um, so there are just tons of terrible dates. There's actually one scene when they first decide to do this and they're all in this bar and like these guys are starting to feel like they're getting harassed. They get kicked out of the bar. You know, it's just, it's hysterical, but um, it's all going to be a very happy ending. I'm sure it's going to be. Um, so Andy is a BIPOC author, which we love. And um, again, she's just got it going on. There's a, a we have a great clip of her um, on the Graham Norton show. Again, you can see my Anglophileness because I'm referencing loads of British television series. So, but Graham Norton interviewed her and uh, she was hysterical on it. Um, anyway, that's, that's that book. Again, another book that I think we're hoping to get the Edelweiss uh, galley up there for you very soon, but a lot of fun. All right. Okay. This is my favorite book. Um, I know I'm not supposed, I know I'm not supposed to have favorites. Um, like your Every children. mother does. I know exactly. So this is Englishman Rob Pope. He he was a veterinarian who basically left his job in pursuit of a dream to become the first person ever to complete the epic run undertaken by one of Hollywood's most beloved characters, Forrest Gump. Um, this is a, a true story of his journey. He did 15,600 miles, ran five times across the United States. Um, he's <clears throat> he's going to finish off the run. <clears throat> he ran right into, uh, he, he started running in 2017. He kind of ran right into that very early days of the Trump administration and, and running through like the South and the West and, you know, the Northeast and kind of like seeing America dealing with that sort of piece of what was happening in our country. And so he's got this really interesting take on that, but it's, it's also hysterically funny. You can see he went full for it. This is him on the cover. Um, he actually turned up in Alabama, like got his hair shorn in that Forrest Gump way, was wearing the outfit when he first started and then literally grew the beard and um, went, you know, went for it. And he did a lot of like local media along the way, um, really, really fun stuff. He is a treasure. Um, I, uh, we had a phone call with him, a Zoom call, and he was just, you know, you just can't stop him talking. It's great. <laughs> I'd like to see him get in a room with uh, Jeffrey Archer and Anthony Horowitz. Um, and oh. so this is kind of like, you know, it's a great memoir, but it's also for fans of Forrest Gump, for travel readers, uh, armchair travel tech people, and also people who are into like, you know, um, urban adventures and uh, superhuman races and marathons and it's running it's everything um and it's a really great story and he, he raised a lot of money along the way for charities when he did this so it's also a nice component to that too Jean Marie, I oh, sorry oh i just said amy white asked about the audio book and is do we have an audio book for this Oh, we, we will absolutely have an audiobook for this. It's a really good question if he's reading it. He has a very thick Liverpudlian accent. He's a scouser. Um, so I'm going to guess they maybe didn't want him to read it because it might be hard to understand. But I will find out who reads it. Yeah, we'll definitely have an audio for it. <laughs> okay. Love that. Uh, okay. Well, so um, we want to do a little bit of like some of my genre fiction that I love to do. I've got a couple of uh, World War II books and then I've got a couple of psychological suspense novels. So okay. I'll, go, I'll go real fast with this. Um, this is Beneath a Starless Sky, uh, Tessa Harris. This is a gripping World War II story of love, betrayal, courage. Um, perfect for fans of um, My Name is Eva and the German Midwife. Um, she's set in Munich at the dawn of Hitler's rise, and uh, she is a young Jewish ballerina facing unspeakable choices. Um, and yeah, we've gotten, we've actually already published this in ebook, um, and it's gotten tons of five star reviews on NetGalley. Um, this is definitely, you know, a, a real heart wrenching read. I love this cover. I, you know, we talk about the, World War II historicals, and you saw it a little bit with the Dinah Jeffries cover, and it's always the woman 
turned away, walking away with baggage or something, and there's planes in the sky. And I've had, I've sat in a room with sales reps. I'm lying. I've sat on a Zoom call with sales reps who, who were like, can we get new covers for World War II fiction? And I think this is a really nice new take for World War II fiction. You know, you kind of, you still get your kind of setting in the bottom, but then you can sort of see um, this sort of nice close up of a woman. And I don't know, we'll sort of see how it goes. I yeah, I, go ahead. I, librarians have always, well, I mean, there's been a lot of talk online about the same thing. I don't know what that's about, but it's getting, you know, I mean, I'm glad to see, I'm yeah. glad to see even a profile. And I love no, this I book cover, you I know? know, but um, I mean, people have said like, what is, what is with the backs and the waving of the planes? And, you know, so it's like, it's, I mean, it's evocative, but it's, I, this is striking to me, you know, yeah. that tells you what it is. I think we're good. We're going to be trying to do a few different things. One of the things I keep saying, and I don't know if the librarians feel the same way. It's like, for some reason though, the patrons and the, the book buyers, they seem to love it still. It's almost like they know what they're getting. Like as soon as they see it, they know this is the stories that I like and they, and they can, they kind of go to it. Um, so while I think maybe we're kind of getting fed up with that look, maybe the readers and the patrons aren't quite there yet. But that's not to say we're not going to keep trying to do a few different things. And I think this is a really good example of that. Yep. And librarians, we'd love to hear from you. So tell us what yeah. you think. Um, and we'll bring it on back as Thank we have. So just keep up the conversation and let us know. No, okay? absolutely. absolutely. Uh, it's 22. We're going to go to the next one. Oh, Daughters of the Resistance. Yeah. Okay, so Lana Korczyk is, um, she wrote um, another great book for us called Sisters of War. And I, what I liked about her and her take, and, and again, we are looking at exactly the cover I was talking about. <laughs> We've got the two women walking away, got the planes. Um, but what, I, what is special about Lana Korczyk's book is she's, they're all set in Ukraine. And so looking at World War II in, in Ukraine, in Kiev, basically, is so it's just such an interesting viewpoint. I mean, we see we have a lot of books set in you know Germany or England or France, etc. So I found this really interesting. Both her her previous book, Sisters of War, and this one are set in Kiev. Um, we have sold tons and tons of of Sisters of War, and we're excited for this next new book. Um, and this is also you know fans of Jennifer Robson, Heather Morris, Mandy Robotham, our own author. Um, she's a USA Today bestseller. Yep. And this is the Night Train to Berlin. I, I actually do love this cover. It's 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 love the it. same, but this train to me, yeah. I just love this train and this. It's smoke. haunting. It is very haunting. So yeah. there's, it's yeah. just at least a little something different here. Yeah, and I don't mean to be like no, no. anti backs of women. I don't. I just love that there's. <laughs> Some some variation, you know. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but I find this haunting. Yeah, and we have a comment from um, I think it's Todd Kruger. Oh, I've lost it. He's in um, Baltimore County. I think he said, Le "Leave the planes. Leave the planes. Let me see the planes." It is. It, it is funny. It's like it's very much um, the British have an expression about like it. It, it, will, it shows you what's in the tin. You know, basically, you know what you're getting. So. Yeah, exactly. So Night Train to Berlin, Melanie Hudson. Um, she wrote a book for us uh, right at the start of the pandemic. Actually, it it did very well. Um, it was called the um, Last Letter from Julia, and so this is her next book, the, the Night Train to Berlin, from the hidden Cornish Cove to the war-torn beaches of Normandy in June 1944. It's an epic love story like no other. Um, uh, she's also a USA Today bestseller for us. Um, her last book, you know, tons of reviews um, on all the reader sites, Amazon, on Goodreads, etc. She just gets great reader reviews. Um, and again, this is kind of like the same thing, like Kate Quinn, Pam Genoff, those sorts of authors she's in line with. So, And we're getting lots of comments about love all these historical fiction books. Says Carla Sudo, Jennifer Winberry says, love the way the coats echo the colors on the banners. Ooh. There's lots of love here. So we've got some really oh, that's beautiful books. Very good. Thank you. And then I just have two more quickly. I'll talk to you about um, these two are sort of psychological spent. Um, 
Family, the Family Tree by Steph Ballin and Nicole Mabry. You know how I mentioned I published books from like the UK and Australia and stuff and I hardly ever have American authors. These are American authors. Um, they, they were actually discovered um, from, uh, from the UK. So uh, Nicole Mabry lives in Queens, New York, Virginia. Yes, and, and Lainey. Oh, Lainey and you too. And then Steph Astoria. lives in- Woo. Oh, very good. And then Steph lives in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So, and this is very much, it's like the DNA results are back and there's a serial killer in the family. I mean, this is kind of like thinking of I'll Be Gone in the Dark and uh, fans of Renee Denfield. This is kind of like mm. that sort of a story, um, but writ large. And it's a, it's a striking hook of, you know, a woman who discovers she's adopted does the whole DNA thing and finds out that there's a serial killer in her family. I think this is great for anyone who loves those true crime podcasts, the Netflix docu-series. Um, the authors did so much research. Um, they were great. They are fantastic self-promoters. If you have a library in Charlotte, North Carolina or the Queens Library, you're gonna probably run into these, you know, these authors there because they are that much of, uh, of self-promoters. But um, we have another two books coming from them. So that's going to be exciting. Also going to be um, spins on true crime with a killer fictional twist. So a lot to come from her. They, they took a lot from that Golden State Killer um, uh, case in order to sort of put this sort of story together, that idea mm -hmm. of what the DNA can tell you. Yeah, that's a great quote from Lisa Gardner. And a great quote from Lisa Gardner. Thank you. Yeah, really cool. And then finally- Oh, um, oh I remember this jacket. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, is everyone getting getting the jacket? You see in the, the swastika behind? The reason that this this jacket, I love this jacket is, is because this is actually, you know, World War II meets psychological suspense. Um, I love this book. This was such a great story. Um, basically, uh, it's also from our Harper Australia um, uh, company. So I, I love having some stuff from them. So this is about a woman who comes to discover that her grandparents have been killed brutally in their house in, in Australia. And then she starts to unravel this secret. And it turns out her grandfather was a, was a German soldier, which she thought was just a German soldier. And then there ends up being a signet ring that is going to identify who is this person that they're all tracking this, you know, Nazi, this terrible Nazi, is it the grandfather? And then this woman who's unraveling these secrets um, you know, not believing it can be her wonderful grandfather. And uh, it's kind of a little time slip. You go back in time to the grandfather story and then you come forward and it's this great suspenseful uh, book. So um, this is a really good read and for fans of Hank Philippi Ryan, Jane Harper. Yeah, we've been calling it her Heather Morris meets Jane Harper, so. Heather Morris, wait, Heather Morris meets who? Jane Harper. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Kimberly McGee says, great cover. Oh, good, thank you. <laughs> and Jean Reaper, the historical fiction and the thrillers, are almost all of these available as audiobooks? Yes, everything will be an audiobook. Um, and uh, yes, and the ebooks, uh, yeah, ebooks as well, of course, so. Great. Cool. Well, that's all I sort of pulled out to talk to you about. I hope I didn't overstay my welcome here at Absolutely Door Absolutely not, this was your, this was your hour. I just wanted to make sure you you got them all in. Um, it's great. It's a great range of titles. You know, it's a it's a lot of different things, and I think, but all speaks to the Harper three hundred and sixty imprint and what it is. So, I mean, there's the great comments here. People are really excited about um, all of them. Um, yeah. And um, you know, so I don't know, Chris Laney. What did we it, we talked about the um, the catalog, right? catalog like the jeffrey archer we have the link to jeffrey archer's interview with book list we have donna hayes recipe and her website everything's posted you should have all they should have all the resources oh very good very and, good yes um we have comments you guys want to read some of the comments these last couple ones that just came in Sure, Kim McGee says, great hearing what is coming and how wonderful that we get a taste from all over the world. I think that's a great point. Thank you. Love that. Love that. Uh, Nicole Terry Williams says, thank you for coming out and talking books. Casey Davis loves a variety. Mm. Um, so yeah. much love. Also, yeah, I added the 
little book philosophies. They're all in that catalog now. So oh, I saw that. Like, that's great, great Lainey. Thanks for doing that. They're wonderful. They are just. Oh, wait. Don't go. Oh. I just want to show you one thing. Do you remember this, Virginia? Oh, I do. This I came do. up, actually. Do you know that I did the Library, the library Love Fest Facebook Live? Uh, it was 2017 was my first one. And that's when that book came out. And it was just came up on my Facebook um, memories. So that's why I had this. So we had this oh my God. Remember in the Tiki Hut? Yes, I do. And I remember that you went to go and see a sloth. I did go. I was hugged a sloth. I did. That's true. Down in, uh, well, down in Honduras. <laughs> yes, you went all the way to Honduras. Um, I went to um, the Bronx. Yes, you did. <laughs> and uh and hugged the sloth i'm trying to find a picture because it's just funny um i don't know we were doing sloths i could have brought a lot of pictures <laughs> yeah yeah here we go can you guys see this oh no you uh, can't I'm, I'm, I'm in my i'm in my mother's uh bedroom so i have no idea what you're gonna see all right but yeah my brothers of course okay here we go can you see that oh can look at that one? yeah oh yeah. So yeah. cute. So oh, horrible. so beautiful. So beautiful. You know? Um, All right. You can learn a lot from sloths. <laughs> you can. You can learn a lot from sloths. Um, so um, thank you very much, Jean Marie, for thank you um, guys. I really appreciate it. I appreciate everything you do to get the word out about books to um, the libraries and to our librarian friends. And thanks to all the librarians who are watching for everything you do. You are the backbone of our, our reading culture and we, we definitely totally appreciate you. Thank you. That's very sweet of you and uh, you're lovely. And so are our librarians. And um, so we'll put a, a, a slide up or well, you'll see our, for next week um, we have our two authors of fiction, nonfiction about um, uh, life in the wilderness, sort of thriller in the wilderness and real life in the wilderness dog sledding by Blair Braverman and, um, and Alice Henderson, who's got her, who's got her wonderful uh, series. This is the Blizzard of Polar Bears. Um, and, you know, she's a, uh, she's a, the author is a sanctuary monitor for the Humane Society Wildlife mm -hmm. Land Trust. These women are so interesting, and so um, and you just need to come and and check it all out. So uh, we'll put up more information about that, but we hope to see you. So Virginia, I've enjoyed this tour through your mother's house too. Yeah, thanks. You know, it's uh, it's it's something to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's her dresser. <laughs> yeah, there's four kids, but there's the brothers. What is that about? Anyway, um, okay. Now they always gonna... have favorites. <laughs> of course they do. Um, anyway, Timmy and Tommy. So, um, <laughs> um, so now, um, before we sign off, Chris has something he needs mm. to say. To oh, you. oh my, well, librarian friends, um, uh, this uh, will be my last month with the Library Love Fest team. Uh, I am not going far. I'll be working as a marketing associate with the Harper in print. So hopefully you'll still see me around. I'm always here to say hello, to talk books, to offer sage advice if I have some, I rarely do. But um, yeah, I just want to thank you all. It's been an amazing six years. I'll still be on a few more door to doors. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better team or better people to work with. Uh, it's been a true honor. And um, yeah, I'll try not to get emotional on screen, but I, I, I do, I just, I thank you all so much. and. Um, Yes, it's been amazing. I, Here's to uh, Chris. Eternally grateful for all of you, Here's for Virginia Chris. and Lainey. So, yes, Here's thank you. you. We wish you all the happiness and you will go on to even greater things. But your librarians love you. They're all saying congratulations. We will miss you. And that's lovely. So you've been I amazing. love you all too. Yeah. Love you, Chris. So, love you too. I'm oh. going to get weepy over my Gatorade. <laughs> No, we're happy for you. We are going to miss you, but we understand, and um, we're 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 glad that you're under the Harper roof. So, yes. but yes. Uh, we wanted to let you all know because you know too often we find out almost at the last minute that somebody's leaving, 
And, um, you know, our team is all about our relationships with you all. And so, you know, this way you sort of know, and if you have questions for us, or if you just want to get in touch with Chris, and he's going to be here, like he said, till last week in August. But I personally don't like that, you know, like, oh, yeah, he's gone. Like, no, I mean, we are, we are a team and uh, we love each other. And, um, but Chris is, uh, he's just going to learn more about consumer facing marketing and stuff. And we're really proud of him. And we want nothing but the best for him, but we love him. And we love Lainey. And we love Jean Marie. We love all of you. I'm we not love you. Around, I'm not throwing that word around loosely. I'm really not. It's a wonderful team. It really is. It's like just so solid. And, uh, you know, but, you know, it's what it is. And we know that you'll do great things. And we're happy for you, Chris. So. Thank you, Virginia. You go, you go and learn more. And well, Lainey and I are just going to drink our Gatorade. <laughs> our Monica under a tree. Okay. He's not going far. He can't get rid of us that easily. He'll be a floor away when we're in the office. Right. That's right, Lainey. That's right. <laughs> yes. So, so I'll, I'll be reaching out to many of you individually. Um, and yeah, I'm not, I still have the same email. So I won't be too hard to find. But yeah, I do want to thank you, Virginia, for... Allowing me to grow, best boss in the world, Lainey, you're incredible. And um, yeah, much, much more to come for both of you. And of course, Eugene Marie. I'm glad we can share this too. I've done so much for you, Chris. Yeah. Like... You've inspired. <laughs> a shout out to Lainey Mace. Yes. Lainey. I mean, what a wonderful... Serious. You guys. It's well, been Chris great. has taught me a lot. So I know that he's going on to, to do good things and we'll miss him, but um he's only any book he is behind is only to its benefit so it's gonna you're gonna do a great job that's great Lainey that's that's very sweet and so true yeah. so all right well we just wanted to let you know that and um and uh we wish you all well uh Chris will be here next week we'll be back and you'll hear more uh information between now and next week about these really cool authors um and then two weeks from now we're gonna be cooking <laughs> oh just quickly we have a new library reads podcast episode that went live today with meg cabot because she made the hall of fame for september 2021 so very very excited and she reacted and it was like one of my favorite reactions we've had so soundcloud library love fest podcast and you'll find it can you throw it in here, mm, yeah oh my god it's so good you guys have got to hear this she is just it's it's i don't think she's gonna start crying Honestly, she was just so touched and so thrilled and so, oh, she just had the greatest things to say about libraries who really, I mean, she was a reluctant reader and like librarians play a huge role in her life as a reader and, and her life as a writer. So you've got to, you've got to listen to this. It's just really, really wonderful. So hats off to Meg Cabot. And that's off to all of you. And Jean Marie Kelly, thank you again for bringing these great My pleasure. Thanks today. for having me. Bye, guys. Goodbye, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.